Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. On today's show, we're looking at our local economy and the importance of cooperation in helping small businesses and entrepreneurs grow and thrive. We'll also discuss the economic outlook for 2015 and get an update on the continued development of downtown Phoenix. The City Council recently approved an agreement to work together with the Greater Phoenix Chamber of Commerce to support local businesses. Joining us from the Chamber to discuss the agreement and the prospects for the local economy is Chad Henrich. Chad, welcome to the show. Thank you, Councilwoman Woman Williams. I appreciate the opportunity. So let's talk a little bit about our new agreement. Uh, tell us what you think the benefits are going to be. Sure. Well, uh, just to give you a, a short amount of background, a couple of years ago, the Greater Phoenix Chamber and our board members uh, really decided that we needed to take an uh, increased effort to uh, sustain businesses within Phoenix uh, and help them grow and expand. Uh, many folks may not know this, is that 70% of new jobs are actually created by existing businesses. And uh, so our board members uh, saw a need to approach that, but they wanted to approach it in a smart way. So we looked at uh, really the entire Valley and all the organizations that are supporting economic development. And we found that there is really a gap uh, where uh, services uh, could be provided to help businesses uh, both retain them here in Phoenix and then also expand when those opportunities exist. And as you probably know, uh, the city of Phoenix through their community and economic development uh, department does a substantial amount of work with existing businesses uh, to help them grow and expand. And we've also uh, uh, discovered that the uh, Arizona Commerce Authority uh, is engaged in that work as well with a number of the programs that the state has to offer. So what we've done is uh, with the City of Phoenix and the Arizona Commerce Authority, we've executed agreements to uh, coordinate and share information and really do a lot of our business outreach together where we can and where it's strategic for all of us. I know I uh, go out with our economic folks and call on some of our businesses every year um, just to see how they're doing, uh, how we can help them expand or um, anything else they may need because it's always a learning experience. Uh, I'm very fortunate in the district. I have some very large employers, uh, but I think it's really easy sometimes to forget about the smaller ones and they're the backbone of this entire economy. So I'm delighted that we're going to work together because I think it's extremely important that you have the business experience. Uh, you have a network that you can go out and talk to businesses of all size because it's more than just saying, it's not just dollars, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's about how can we change our operation of the city, regulations or paperwork or uh, development to, to do expansions and make it easier and quicker so it costs less for them to make that expansion and they can make it larger and hire more people. So I'm hoping you're looking at some of those ideas too. Oh, we, we absolutely are. Uh, and lest there be any doubt, the, the whole intent of the program is growth, uh, job growth, and employment growth within Phoenix. And really, we share a lot of the same values with the city and the Commerce Authority where we can increase the uh, per capita average wage in Phoenix. Uh, that is going to help everyone. That'll help all businesses, small and large. And so I think we share those, those values uh, uh, within the program. The other thing that's important, as you'd mentioned, and as you've went out on visits uh, with the Community and Economic Development Department is, relationships matter. And by doing this together, uh, we'll be able to leverage all of our relationships to build additional relationships in the business community. Because as we all know, uh, sometimes when the government shows up at a business, some business owners may, may not find that uh, as something <laughs> they, wa they wanted. True. However, when we go as a team, and they know that the business community is there with the local government and state resources, I think that'll be really effective. Uh, it's kind of like having a, a policeman come to your door. You think, uh-oh, what's wrong? <laughs> right. uh, when we call on them, it's like, okay, what's up? Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I think it is very true that the relationship uh, will build confidence and make them understand that uh, there are great growth opportunities here in the Valley. And yes, they can do it here. And we're actually working as a team to support them. So 
I'm, I'm very excited about the prospects. Well, and, and I'm not sure uh, if, if we've, we haven't really talked about this in the past, but one of the uh, next pieces of the equation that's going to be coming through is, is the healthcare sector partnership that the city initiated uh, a couple of years ago. As, uh, as I'm sure you're aware, and we all know that it's grown to be a, a really impactful process. It's grown from 20 to 30 participants to the last meeting I attended was 110 uh, from the healthcare sector here uh, in the Phoenix and region. And so we're working with the city to transition that uh, to a chamber program so the city can actually replicate the success and look at another sector where, where, where we can build on uh, that strength. So uh, it's another great partnership that we're working on within the city and it, it's going to result in a better economic climate for the healthcare industry here in Phoenix. I think it's absolutely great to hear because I think one of the things that we need to focus on too is, I mean, we focused on the caregivers, um, now focus on the suppliers. Convince them that they can grow here or they could come here, make it easier uh, to do their job and bring new business in as well as growth. That's true, that's true. And really another key aspect that we've found as we've looked at the different uh, industry areas that we'll, what we'll be focusing on, a common theme uh, throughout all of them is workforce needs. Uh, and so building on the pipeline of qualified workers and finding out what uh, areas we have for strength uh, within, the work, within the workforce development uh, in Phoenix will help us build that pipeline uh, so that we have the qualified workers uh, available when business needs to expand. So I think that's going to be another important development. Todd Sanders was recently uh, the guest speaker at the Washington Elementary School District and uh, talking about the chamber and your goals next year and that was uh, a major thing is finding qualified skilled workers and emphasizing how important education is and so i'm hoping that's an area this partnership will go because he was talking about potential changes going to the legislature um, to make sure that uh, there's adequate funding uh, that there's not only the goal to succeed to go to college, but to develop the trade skills because we have a shortage of electricians and plumbers and, and all of those that make a very livable wage, um, but somehow we haven't put an emphasis to our young people how important that is. So I'm looking forward and hoping that you're gonna help us as a city um, be a partner in that too. Well, I think that's, that's one of the important uh, outcomes of the partnership as well, is that we'll be able to communicate about those needs and partner with the education community that we, like we have in the past. Uh, as you're probably familiar, we've, we've always been supportive of higher standards within our education system. And that, those, those reasons are based on costs and timing. Uh, today, uh, we remediate a significant portion of the students that exit high school. And so who pays for that? Uh, the student pays for that and the taxpayer pays for that. So the taxpayer has already paid for their K through 12 education. Now the student uh, gets to pay for it again when they do a remedial course at a community college uh, before they can move on to further higher education. So uh, a lot of that delays the workforce uh, pipeline and costs us in time and, and resources. So it's, it's certainly a very high priority for business to, uh, to be able to partner with uh, the local government and with the um, school districts uh, to make sure that our students are prepared for college and career. I, it's, I, I don't think, I've, I've lived here about 40 years and I have, this is well, I guess, the first time that I've really seen everyone coming together to support education. And I think a lot of it is because we have learned um, as we travel and try to recruit businesses uh, or get them to expand here, um, First thing out of their mouth is workforce, trained employees. Do you have them? And they'll name specifically some areas. And we kind of stutter and stammer in response um, because I don't think we're well educated on what's available here. So I'm hoping we can work that in and you can teach us uh, so that we have ready answers. And I, I just see so much coming from this partnership. Um, we need your help. I think uh, you have a lot of expertise that we need 
I've never thought that uh, we were the experts in developing jobs, but uh, we have some things we can offer. And I think uh, the, we have that workforce development office and we can help train uh, um, new company or expansion employees. Um, are you going to utilize that? We certainly will. Uh, in fact, the healthcare sector partnership meetings uh, are currently held in that office, and it, it, it is a spectacular facility. Uh, I'm sure you've been there and uh, seen the work that can be done there. Uh, it works excellent. It's an excellent uh, 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 place for ideas to form. For the, for the partnership, it coordinates well with the size, even at 110 people now. Uh, they, they do tabletop discussions, and they actually pull, pull out a lot of the best ideas from each one of those roundtable groups to incorporate into their strategic planning and really the outcomes uh, that they're focusing on. So it's an excellent facility both for those, those types of activities and for all the training, uh, workforce training needs that, that you had mentioned. Oh. Uh and how is the state going to work with us? Uh, well, the uh, Arizona Commerce Authority uh, has also uh, executed an agreement to share information with the Greater Phoenix Chamber. And I believe uh, they're also working with the city of Phoenix to do, to do a, a like type of agreement. And so what that helps us with is we know who's talking to who uh, between the three of us, and we can coordinate where uh, most appropriate uh, the, the people that will actually do the visits. Uh, maybe it's most strategic for a, one business owner to hear from the city and the chamber. Maybe it's more strategic for uh, a different business to hear from the Commerce Authority and maybe some of the uh, programs that the state has to offer uh, with the chamber or the, both the Commerce Authority and the city. So it'll really help us, for lack of a better term, triage uh, the, the visits because I, I I'm sure you know there's over 70,000 businesses in Phoenix alone. And so when we look at this for Phoenix and the region, uh, it's a task too large for even all three of us to do, honestly. Uh, so if we can work smarter together, uh, I think we'll, we'll see more impact. I, I think 2015 is going to be a booming year. I see all these new things coming on, the partnerships, which I think is a blessing for the city of Phoenix because we're a new city. We've enjoyed a lot of growth. We haven't had to work that hard. Um, if you really are truthful about it, uh, we've depended on other agency and just our weather. Um, that's no longer true. And so I think it's so important that we work together. So I wanna thank you very much for being here and being our partner and I look forward to working with you. Thank so. you very much, Councilwoman. I appreciate being on your show and appreciate being able to always work with you. Surely. Up next, we'll hear more about continuing efforts to develop and grow Phoenix's downtown. Keep watching on the issues. What would you do if you saw a dog, a cat, or a horse that looked like this? Animal cruelty and neglect is a crime that needs to be reported. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams, here with my rescued pets, Henry and Cheyenne. And I'm Councilman Michael Nowakowski, asking for your help. If you ever suspect animal cruelty, call Crime Stop, the Arizona Humane Society, or the Sheriff's Office. Animal cruelty is a crime. And together, we could stop it. Welcome back to On the Issues. I'm Councilwoman Thelda Williams. Joining me now is Don Kuth, President of the Phoenix Community Alliance. Don, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I'm uh, very pleasure and happy to be here today. So. Tell us what the Alliance is and what it does. Well, the PCA is, uh, we've been around now for over 30 years, and uh, the best way to describe us is we are a nonprofit, private sector, central city economic development organization. And we just help to try to get projects done in, this, in, the, in the central city, and over the years have been engaged in things like uh, raising five and a half million dollars of private sector money to help build Steel Indian School Park. Uh, working on the light rail project from getting it approved by the voters to uh, development, um, the, the convention center expansion, the uh, ASU downtown campus and that bond election. Uh, and one that we're very proud of is the human services campus, working with the county and raising $26 million public private money to build that facility, which even after five or six years is still considered uh, best of class. Oh, 
and overrun. It's so, and overrun, unfortunately. So busy, so busy. I, I, I was just sitting here thinking, because you just tackle the small projects, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> we, take on, we take easy. on the easy ones, you yeah. know, the ones that you can get done in just a couple of days. <laughs> uh, I, I noticed by your list. What's the most important thing you're working on now? Well, uh, you know, this is a real interesting time for, uh, for uh, Phoenix and for the, the central city. Uh, is how do we create more housing opportunities within the downtown and midtown areas uh, to take advantage of the light rail development, to take advantage of the fact that you've got uh, baby boomer, boomers and millenniums and Gen Ys that don't want to have that suburban experience either initially or uh, again or still and really want to come back into the core areas and yet we're kind of out of product for them right now. I think the the uh, vacancy rate in the downtown area is only about five or six percent. So we need to get housing built uh, to allow uh, all these folks that want to come into the downtown area to get here. And light rail has made all the difference. I, I'm so delighted to hear that because we're working on the new transportation um, renewal. Uh, the Hopefully it'll be yes, on the Yes, I have my street. shopping list. I, I submitted uh, it the other day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, you know, for people in my district, you know, Metro Center North, um, it's hard to think that people want to move down here. I mean, we're suburbia at the best. So it's, it's a challenge for them to think, you know, light rail and you really need that much housing. I think it's very interesting. Well, what's, what's, what's even more interesting is some of the uh, more recent uh, projects that have been developed, like the apartments at Cityscape and others. These people are taking those units and they don't have cars. I know. People in Phoenix that get around without cars. Who'd have thought? <laughs> Almost <laughs> not imaginable. And, but, you know, I was amazed at how many ASU students. Um, my grandson just started at mm -hmm. ASU downtown. And then I, I am interviewed by a lot of the students. They must be part of their class project. They'll find a council person and talk about transportation or, or something we're doing. Um, how many don't have cars? They absolutely depend on the light rail to get them where they're going. You can almost tie the end of the semester to how many student calls you get from the journalism kids yes. waiting to finish their projects. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. And, and, oh, oh, oh it yes, must be it, exam it's, time. It's, it's Monday and uh, 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 Wednesday I have to have this submitted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can you do it right now? They have yeah. no sense of time. No, well, I have a grandson, <laughs> as I repeated. I understand completely. I always laugh. Um, I, I had to laugh. He, one of his studies is criminal justice as well as journalism. And he, I get this urgent text message home at night, and he says, is there any way you think it's possible I could get a ride along with the police officer? <laughs> 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 well, that was pretty easy. I do that for everybody. So. Right, right. <laughs> well, I had to laugh at him. But I, I, I mean, the students, the growth, the downtown area is, is continuing to be a challenge. What do you see as our biggest challenges down well, here? Well, I think that, uh, um, you know, as we look at, say, the next 20, 25 years, and, and you know, it's not that far away. I know people kind of glaze when they think about that, but we're going to have tremendous growth within the city, and there's going to be a lot of pressure for growth within the central corridor, and it's making sure that we uh, do the right kinds of projects so that we don't... Um, undervalue uh, the land that's available by doing something that isn't significant. Uh, we're going we're gonna to be going tall, uh, not, you know, Chicago, New York tall, but certainly taller than we are now. And quite frankly, that's just a product of uh, land availability. We are an urban city. We are becoming an urban city, absolutely. We are growing into ourselves. Exactly. And that's a good thing. It uh, is. I think it's a sustainable thing. Um, um, it's interesting that you, that you hear from the home builders how they're having these challenges with home sales. Well, they're still out way beyond the, the uh, outer rings trying to sell homes, and that's not where people want to live. It's amazing. It, it, I have been, I, I guess I just didn't think about us having that particular problem of downtown and, and the bicycles, the apartments, the condos, whatever, living downtown. Um, but, but now we need the amenities. We need the we grocery do. stores, and we need yes. this, uh, the shopping. We need those aspects to uh, complete the package. I, I was getting my nails done, and this gal next to me said, I come clear up here because I live downtown, and I have a downtown condo. I work down there, but there's no nail places. 
So ah. I come back and said, You need Aha, to find that entrepreneur. You need to find some, <laughs> some women's services and exactly. put it downtown so that they're available on the evenings and weekends for all these people that are living down here. And it's some of the times it's the small things that we get focused on the larger ones. Yep. And I, I, so I was laughing saying that. Well, you not only do just downtown, there's a Discovery Triangle. Oh, yes. Tell uh, us what it uh, is. Uh, we created a, uh, another nonprofit organization about five years ago now called the Discovery Triangle Development Corporation. And that is a uh, public private uh, uh, organization that includes the cities of Phoenix and Tempe and a number of uh, private sector uh, organizations, plus the universities and the community college. And the goal of that was to create uh, economic development opportunities between downtown Phoenix, downtown Tempe, primarily along the light rail line. Um, that was part of the first parts of the metropolitan area that were developed, and not much has happened since then. But when you look at that, it's about a 25 square mile area. Uh, we're fairly convinced that it is the most asset rich 25 square mile area in the southwestern United States. When you think of you've got light rail, you've got heavy rail, you've got freeways, you've got a great arterial system, you have this little thing called Sky Harbor International Airport, you have universities at, uh, at both ends, you have Papago Park, which is the third leg of the triangle. Um, there's not many places in this country that have those assets so tightly packed. Uh, and it's really in a great position to do some good things for job creation uh, and uh, to some degree housing though because of the airport not as much as you might in other areas but taking advantage of that uh, that uh, location uh, and that asset which we which is Sky Harbor to I do think sometimes is an underutilized asset uh, is something we can look forward to and we're having a lot of fun working on it I was uh, I think coming back from Sky Harbor uh, the other day to downtown and it it looks better I, I, it was an area that had was pretty tired, worn down, and, and looked pretty rough. Well, quite you have frankly. A, you have some uh, a, a couple of apartment projects under construction, and there's two more uh, that are on the drawing boards. Uh, there's just been kind of a beautification of the area. There's been some uh, some uh, um, uh, cleanup, and uh, it's looking good. Uh, Van Buren is beginning to to look a little bit better, and so we think that area uh, holds a lot of promise and. Also, the areas uh, south of the airport, uh, back around um, um, uh, university and the like. Uh, part of that because the noise contour is going to reduce the impact uh, so that it allows opportunities for other kinds of development and it's something that we, we look forward to. But we're still faced with a big problem. That is a, that is a, uh, a low income census tract area. You have a lot of uh, people that are uh, well below poverty. Uh, you have challenges. Uh, with the schools where most of the kids are on free and reduced lunch. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't have access to uh, fresh and healthy food. Uh, too many of them shop at convenience stores for their groceries, which isn't a good thing. So one of the things that we did back in April is we launched a, a program called Fresh Express in partnership with Valley Metro and the ASU College of Nursing and UMOM and others. Yeah. And we have a, uh, an old city bus that we can, uh, cleaned out, put uh, shelving and racking on it and we have a produce market on wheels. And we go to schools and senior centers and uh, neighborhood uh, uh, locations in this area to give them access to uh, fresh fruits and vegetables twice a week, what's going to three days a week okay. in January. Oh good, I was just gonna say, what's the response? We have, uh, since April, we have served almost 5,000 customers. Wow. And uh, it's the, the response has been great. Uh, and, and we're taking it to a lot of locations that give people some access to it. We're getting a lot of pressure to have a second one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Good. This wasn't a business I had planned on getting into, but it just worked out that if we can help, if we can help some kids eat healthier, then maybe they feel better. If they feel better, maybe they learn better. If they learn better, who knows what can happen to their lives. It could totally change a life. Absolutely. So, and, and that area has a, a, people who have lived there forever. Right. I mean, it's generational. <clears throat> And so I can see how that could feed into some of the challenges you have. Um, but it's, it's still a great area with great people. Tremendous so potential. Absolutely. Tremendous it's very potential. exciting. I think we're at this opportunity now uh, where we can go back to some of the first generation uh, areas that developed outside of the central city 
and uh, re-engage with them and rejuvenate them and, and uh, make them a better place. I think you're right. I, I noticed that uh, it's kind of like the warehouse district and those are turning around and, and becoming uh, major projects and, oh, yeah. and I mean all kinds of things in them and it's, it's pretty exciting and I can see the same thing happening. So, um, and It's going to be a, a lot of fun the next few years. It is and I think 2015 is going to be great. I really do. I think we have a lot on our plate. Uh, but I have never seen better cooperation amongst business, governments, schools, all of us really working in the same direction and committed to making th changes, good changes happen. And I think it, uh, you know, as much as we, we I think people try to, um, um, uh, try to diminish the impact of mid midterm elections, they really take a lot of bite out of the uh, out of the economy and and out of the activity because everyone's kind of sitting on their hands to say all right well who's going to be in and and what what direction are they going to have for my project or the ability to get financing uh that's over now and and we can move ahead on that uh that front i i think you're absolutely correct uh, i think a lot of business owners were waiting um they have the means to expand uh, but they wanted assurance that there would still be good opportunities that would be beneficial for them. Right. So, a lot, well, lot of money on the sidelines that hopefully now gets in the game. I hope so. I hope so. I know the city needs <laughs> yeah. needs help, so I'm hoping it through. Buy Phoenix. Yeah, yeah, shop Phoenix. So, thank you so much for coming. Well, thank today. you for having me. It's always a pleasure. So. That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about this show, call my office, 602-262-7444, or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district1. We'll see you next time on the Issues.